Hello there, it is Asher. And Beckett with your children summer today. But really, it's the start of something else. Something else? Today is Palm Sunday. Oh, I like this day. Usually, we get away with palms. Yay. And we run in church. <laughs> yeah, but then usually, there's this weird part later in the service. They do kind of a play where they have people do different parts and they talk about the last meal that Jesus had and how he died. Talking about people dying is a real bummer, especially after palm waving and wondering everything. Churches started doing it, I guess, because people would come to church on Palm Sunday and then not show up again until Easter. So they miss Monday, Thursday worship and Good Friday services and not fully understand the story of Easter. Wait, we're allowed to skip those and Friday services? Apparently, but not only your parents are pastors, but they are good services with important stories. And we're going to do the first part of the play. Really? The Monday Thursday part. Jesus' last meal. Thank you. What would you have for your last meal? Pizza. What would you have? Chocolate cake. Good choice. Take it away, nail -aider. We have a nail -aider? Yes. I always want to have a nail -aider. And to help us tell the story, we have Dancing Jesus as Jesus. And he is Peter. And the rest of the disciples. Don't worry, it'll all make sense soon. And action! The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. When the hour of the Passover meal came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. What's Passover? It was the last plague that got the people of Israel out of being slaves in Egypt. Whichever house had the Passover mark, God would pass over that house and they would be safe. It is now a holiday for the Jewish people. And Jesus is Jewish! Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you, that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. It is communion! The first time they did communion! And we are getting to watch! I mean, it's pretend, but still. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Dun, dun, dun! This meal has it all! Food, friends, and betrayal. I mean, yeah, it's a pretty big deal. Turning Jesus over to the officials to get hot like that. I would not want to be Judas, the betrayer here. Boy, you know, I'm not. Come on, let the drama play out. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, the king of the Gentiles lords it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table, or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. They just gave up? On solving the mystery of who would betray Jesus and switch to the greatest? Obviously, Jesus is the greatest. Jesus is sitting in the important person's seat, if it had seats. But the point Jesus is trying to make is that you're not supposed to think like that. They gave him that seat because he's the most powerful. And that's how he usually do things like that. Who is the most famous or has the most money gets the best spot. But Jesus says it should be about who serves the best, helps the best, cares for the neighbor the best. They deserve the best chair. You are those who have stood by me in my trials and I confer on you just as my father has conferred on me a kingdom so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, 
and you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. That is very specific. A lot of people think this part is not about the crowing, but about when roosters crow. The first crow would have been at midnight, and then first light, and then a little after that. Jesus was giving Peter a long time to make the right decision. Roosters have even become a sign of God's mercy, as God gave Peter a long time to make the right decision. And I think we eat God's mercy all the time. What? Kentucky Fried God's mercy. <clears throat> Jesus said to them, When I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, No, not a thing. Other than a purse, a bag, or sandals, he just means God provided them everything they needed. Ah, uh, true question. And for once, the disciples didn't mess it up. Jesus said to them, But now, the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, It is enough. I told Dad I should get a sword. <gasps> Jesus just means that now they're on their own. They are going to have to look after themselves. God will, of course, still guide them, but they will no longer have Jesus physically with them every day. So they must be careful and prepared with the purses and bags. In my heaven, so <laughs> How many swords do they have, though? When Jesus says, it's enough. Two. Two for twelve disciples. That's not enough for a war or a big fight. Jesus is preparing them. And as for the world, we find ourselves in. That's what this whole section has been about. When we feel like we can't find God, we can always come back to the communion table and find Jesus waiting there for us. Bad things can happen in the world, and we need to be careful. As everything goes well for everyone after this part of the story. Right? Right? I mean, it all ends well on Easter morning when Jesus comes back from the dead. But you know, in order to come back from the dead, you have to, yeah, now. At least don't have his friends with him. Oh, right. Kentucky Fried Peter. The good news is that this sad part of the story we are about to hear reminds us that when we go through something sad, God is still with us. People weren't sure before this. They thought maybe God is sending them bad things. But after the Son of God goes through everything with the cross and comes back from the dead, we learn that God is at our side through whatever we face. That's not a spoiler alert. We gotta put up one end on this video or something. That's it for this part of the Passion Reading and your children's sermon. Amen. Happy Palm Sunday. <laughs>